What's up guys? Asthma is a common condition in both adults and pediatric cases. And it is often inappropriately treated in most ca- most times that um, parents are often uh, resorting to what you call uh, ano yan? Uh, self-medication. No? And yun ang problema natin kapag nag-self-medicate ang ating uh, mga pasyente kasi either ibang gamot na ibigay nila nakuhan or nakuha nila yung tamang gamot kaso lang sobra-sobra or over naman na yung pagbigay ng gamot natin so pinakamainam dyan is magpatingin sa doktor okay tamang uh, gabay kung paano natin ma-address ma-diagnose at paano natin makontrol ang sintomas nyo ng asthma so what's up again this is Dr. Chris the Scrubby MD and this video will dive right through the types of asthma, the triggers, and also what are the things that you need to know no, in managing cases of asthma sa, pa- sa family, no, sa family level. Now, it's important for you if you have members in the family that have has asthma no, to ha- encourage them no, to seek consult regularly to check if their level of control is uh, met and then ma-adjust yung mga medications nila. And dadaan natin yung mga gamot na yon, kasi hindi basta-basta ang mga gamot na pwede natin ibigay sa asthma. Okay? So, bago tayo magsimula, let's go to our So, I'm gonna be using the reference from GINA. So, GINA is a global uh, strategy for asthma management. Uh, so, ang tamang definition is global initiative for asthma. No? It's uh, often the guideline that we use no, sa mga doctors in managing asthma both adults and pediatric cases. So, ano ba yung mga symptoms na kailangan natin makita sa pasyenteng may asthma? So, is Uh, apat lang kadalasan ang tinitignan naming mga simptomas na dapat meron siya. Isa dyan ay uh, cough. The cough is usually uh, triggered. No? May, na- may nag-trigger sa kanya or his- with a history of atopy or allergy. Pangalawa is uh, meron siyang maingay na baga. No? Wheezes. Yung presence of wheezes. Okay? So, yung pag inoscultate namin using a stethoscope, ang baga ng isang pasyente na may suspecha naming asthma parang pumipito no ang isang ang, ang paano ba kailan ko ba sabihin <laughs> yung ganun yung ganun yung tunog sorry guys medyo nakakatawa yan pero yun lang naman talaga yun naman talaga yung narinig mo pag nag-inhale siya meron siyang konting whistling sound pag nilabas yung hangin kapag pinakinggan mo sa Stethoscope. Ang problem ang doon is kasi namamaga yung daluyan ng hangin. There is inflammation in the area with together with also uh, some forms of secretion. No, Doon sa inflammation na yun kasi nagkakaroon ng reaction sa isang either trigger na nalanghap or nandapos sa isang pasyente na pwedeng nag-start ng inflammation niya. Okay? Ang reaction ng asthma ay usually uh, tinatawag nating allergic type. No? So, pag allergic meaning may previous infection or, I mean, sorry, correct. Correct ko yan. Uh, previous exposure. Okay? And then, uh, ano to? Once nagkaroon ng previous exposure, nagkaroon ka ng in-reaction. Kapag magkaroon ka ng second exposure, nagkakaroon ka ng mas worse na reaction. Now, mas nagiging serious yung case na yun. Kapag, meron siya nung atopy gene or atopy, no higher risk for atopy. Nung sa family mo, uh, if you are suspecting uh, having asthma, no sa family mo, nanay mo, meron siyang uh, uh, asthma, tatay mo, may asthma, kapatid mo, may atopic dermatitis, may sister ka na may 
allergic rhinitis or kuya na may allergic rhinitis. Those are features of uh, a family history of atopy. So, mag-akwan ka na. <laughs> mag assume ka or possibly baka meron ka ding asthma or allergic rhinitis in the future kung wala pang lumalabas sa'yo. Okay? So, asa na tayo? Uh, wheezes, cough, chest tightness, okay, is uh, is also one. Yung tipong parang naninikip ang dibdib. Iba yung chest tightness ng uh, pananakit ng puso. No? Para, sa mga kasong ganito, kailangan din stratify natin yung pasyente. Pa, kasi matanda siya, sumasakit ang dibdib, kailangan investiga ng puso. Pero kung bata ito, sumasabay sa paghinga ang pananakit ng dibdib, hirap huminga, mas madalas Uh, kapag na papaubo, no? usually yung sitwasyon na yun ay more on respiratory or sa baga. So, mas mag, mag-focus kami more on respiratory concerns. Okay? So, chest tightness as well as ano yan, coughing. Nabanggit ko na yung coughing kanina, di ba? So, wheezes, shortness of breath, yun din. Hirap pumasok yung hinga. Uh, chest tightness and coughing. Apat na yun. Okay? Yung apat na yun, dapat Uh, usually, magsususpet siya na kami, lalo na if there's a strong family of, familiar history of atopy. Now, hindi lahat, lahat ng asthma kailangan may atopy. Mayroon din yung mga other forms of asthma or variants ng asthma na kailangan natin malaman. Okay? So, that would be more on uh, the types of asthma. Pwede natin yung discuss in another video. So, those types of asthma would either be exercise-induced, medication-induced asthma, Okay, and so forth and so on. Yun, marami pong version ng asthma. Now, ang gusto ko din malaman nyo is paano namin dinadiagnose ang isang pasyente na may asthma. So, when we got, uh, when we get those uh, me, um, fi- features no, in history and physical examination, we have to prov- uh, check, no, diagnose the patient also using uh, A lot of means. Isa is a diagnostic tool using your spirometry or peak expiratory flow meters no? or PEF. Ang spirometry ang mas, kwan, um, mas magandang gamitin kasi it's more uh, widely accepted. Also, even used in uh, COPD, no? chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Pero pag uh, wala yun, we could also use your peak exploratory flow meter. So, itong mga test na to, wait lang, tignan ko kung meron akong PF dun sa box ko. Ay. Okay, ito. These are example of a PEF. So, pinapabuga namin sa pasyente ito. And then, check namin yung grading kung maabot ba siya sa normal levels. Dapat, yung measurement ng pagbuga ng isang pasyente, maabot siya sa green zone. No? Kung sa green area, naabot niya, it's more of normal. Yung airflow, uh, expiratory airflow niya. Meaning, nilalabas yung hangin. No? Hindi naiipit sa loob. Pero kung naiipit siya, We suggest na magpa-spirometry yung pasyente para ma-confirm yung asthma. Now, kung wala, that's the time we can do trial. Okay, trial treatment for uh, suspected asthma. Center lang ako. <laughs> so, pwede natin gawin yung, magbigay na tayo ng, uh, ano to? Bronchodilators. Okay. So, for bronchodilators, ito. Yung trial, untreated asthma, we can provide bronchodilators. Random bronchodilator testing. So, mag-provide tayo ng either salmeterol, salbutamol. No? Pag na-relieve siya, okay, we could uh, consider a case of asthma. Now, um, para pag meron tayong spirometry, yung mga, yung mga parameters doon ay may mga values kami na tinitignan doon based kung, kung uh, adult ba to or pediatric. So, either your FEV1 or FVC. And kailangan magkaroon ng uh, increase yung value ng uh, FEV1, FVC by more than 12%, more than or equal to 12%, or more than to, or equal to 200 ml. So, yon more on the side of a doctor. No? Mas kailangan namin malaman yon 
okay, na makita para ma-diagnose yung asthma. Now, mo da-diagnose na namin yung asthma, ano yung next, doc? Ano yung next? Siyempre, is the appropriateness of your treatment. Now, kung hindi appropriate ang treatment mo, marami kasing pwedeng mangyari din dyan. Underdiagnosis and overdiagnosis would lead to morbidities and mortalities. No? Usually, uh, in a rural setting kasi, yung binibigay na treatment is yung salbutamol nebulization. Ang problem lang doon is kung yun lang yung nabibigay ng gamot and yun lang yung available sa area ng pasyente, um, the problem there is nagawin niya araw-araw kung hindi na-instruct ng maayos ng uh, doktor nandun sa primary health center na hindi siya pang araw-araw. Okay? Lalo na kung kailangan lang na as needed lang yung dosage natin. And ang, um, let's say, salbutamol is short-acting. Panandalian lang yun. Mabilis lang ang effect niya. And ang problem dyan, kapag inaraw-araw mo, sa medications kasi ng salbutamol, pwede rin siya mag-cause ng pagtaas ng heart rate mo and magkakaroon ka ng burden sa puso. Lalo na kung hindi na adjust yan ng iyong doktor. Kaya lagi kong sinasabi sa aking mga pasyente, magpatingin. Regularly magpa-check up kayo para hindi natin maabuso yung mga gamot at ma-adjust natin na maayos. Okay? Isa pa, may, may mga instances na gumagamit sila ng oral corticosteroids. Well, it's important to take note that steroids lessen yung inflammation. Okay? Pero, oral corticosteroids have also things that we need to consider. Kasi oral treatment siya, papasok siya sa katawan mo through your bloodstream. Papasok siya, apektuhan niya ang other systems ng, orga, ng katawan mo. Ang target kasi natin lang ay ang respiratory tract. Okay? So, kung ang target lang natin ng respiratory tract, yun lang dapat ang ating maapektuhan. Kaso, ang steroids, it can affect, well, number one, your uh, uh, your immune system, magiging dull yung immune system mo, hindi siya mas magiging efficient in combating infection. Uh, pangalawa, steroids can also, uh, if prolonged use, ha, take tooth with prolonged use, it can induce hyperglycemia or pagtaas ng asukal kung hindi nababantayan ito ng maayos. Kasi hindi pang maintenance ang steroids, guys. Hindi yan maintenance. Not unless it's a, uh, hindi siya oral. Okay? Uh, ano pa ang pwede mangyari dyan? It can downplay your immune system. It can increase your sugar as well as it can mess up your adrenals. Okay? Kasi yung adrenals, they also create the natural forms of your steroids, no? And uh, that will haywire a lot of hormones no, sa ating katawan. Yun ang ayaw natin mangyari, guys. No? So, ayaw naman natin magkaroon ng severe complications. Okay, that's why oral steroids are only given if there are nothing else. No? Kung hindi available yung ibang mga medications. Okay? And if it's necessary and it's been proven in the guidelines na yun ang kailangan ibigay uh, by means of okay the the practice that has been studied for a particular disease now for asthma kasi oral steroids napakalayo pa niyang maging final resort no ang kailangan namin is inhaled corticosteroids hindi siya oral corticosteroids okay so take note of that guys so you don't need a uh, Yung salbutamol is short-acting, but if in maintenance per se, it's better that we use something longer or long-acting. The long-acting is usually yung term naming lab, laba. Okay, long-acting bronchodilator. Si salbutamol is a saba, short-acting bronchodilator. An oral corticosteroid enters orally, pero mas prefer namin ang inhaled. Nadaan lang sa lungs, okay? Hindi siya dadada sa bunganga, ay sa sa chan, okay? So, yun ang kailangan natin maintindihan. Now, bakit? Uh, sabi ko nga, it can ha- have, a lot or, uh, have a lot of side effects. Now, it's it's best to consider, sabi din dito, long-term outcomes with, with the patient for asthma. Kasi, yung asthma, it can be um, 
it will last forever. Kumbaga. And kung hindi nagiging control ang asthma, it can affect your sleep, it can affect your physical activity, it can affect your work, and your day-to-day activities. Okay? Problema, mahirap na problema yan. Kapag hindi nakakontrol ang pag, hinga mo dahil sa asthma, guys. Okay? Now, first thing that we do kapag may mga ganitong cases is prescribe them the correct medication. Aside from that, we educate them kung ano ba yung mga dapat nilang iwasan sa mga pasyente may asthma. I'm looking at you guys. You guys, alam ko na, alam ko nakikinig kayo and alam ko, alam nyo yung pinagsasabi kong kailangan natin pag-usapan with regards to prevention. Okay, for this, this is the table or the algorithm that we use for adults and adolescents. Now, We dig in deep. There are two steps kasi dito. For asthma, we have uh, steps, track, I mean. Track 1 and track 2. For track 1, we use your inhaled corticosteroids. Yung abbreviation niya is ICS, guys. And for motorol. For motorol is a uh, long-acting okay, cortic- uh, bronchodilator. It's more uh, efficient kasi it's been used in the studies compared to salbutamol. Okay? So, when we start patients for track 1 na may asthma, we provide them as needed ICS for motorol. Okay? Inhaled corticosteroid plus for motorol. Dalawang gamot na. So, Doc, meron bang available na ganun? Yes. Meron yung, wala kasi akong dalang sample to. Yung inhaler, yung puff. Or meron din yung disc inhaler or yung discus inhaler. Okay. Merong combinations ng for motorol and an ICS. Yung ICS could either be budesonide. Ano pa ba yung ibang kwan? corticosteroid na? Ay, budesonide pa. Maraming kwan eh. Marami pang <coughs> marami pang pwedeng uh, cort- uh, corticosteroids na inhaled versions yon. Nakasama siya. So, a steroid and a long acting beta bla uh, bet beta beta agonist or be- bronchodilator. Okay, yun ang first namin. Bakit sinabing as needed? So, sabi niya dyan, as needed. Okay? As needed, meaning kapag meron lang attacks. No? Yan. As needed only. Now, we follow up the patient after let's see, uh, three weeks. Kamusta po, Doc? Kamu- eh, kamusta po, ma'am? Kamusta po ang asthma? Ang simptomas nyo, kamusta sa araw-araw? May simptoms ba sa isang, sa isang linggo? Okay? Or sa dalawang linggo? Nagkaroon ka ba ng atake? Ng at least dalawa sa, sa umaga or sa gabi? Um, wala, wala po, Doc. Wala. Pero matra- natry kong once lang attack. Kung once lang, well, you could consider that. Okay lang naman yon. Uh, at least, meron, meron ka naman yung kwan mo, yung puff mo, nagagamit mo naman kung sakaling inatake ka. Yes po, Doc. Kung nakakatrabaho ka ng maayos, yes. Okay. More likely, your patient is controlled. no So, controlled siya. Hindi mo kailangan i-adjust yung medication niya as needed pa rin siya. Hindi siya araw-araw. Okay? Hindi siya araw-araw, guys. Okay? Now, paano kapag hindi controlled? Doc, inatake ako ng asthma ko dalawang beses last week. Tapos, inatake din ako ng gabi. Nakakakuha naka, ako dalawang puff ako ng inhaler ko. So, more likely, hindi siya controlled. No? So, kapag ganyan, either partly controlled or, or uncontrolled siya, ang gagawin mo, itataas mo. From as needed, magiging daily maintenance yung puff niya. So, araw-araw mo bibigay yung puff ng asthma. And then, kapag inatake siya, magdadagdag siya ng extra na puff. Okay? So, either once a day muna na maintenance sa tuloy-tuloy. And then, kapag inatake siya, magdagdag siya ng isa. Okay? Take note din rin kung ilang beses siya aatakihin sa susunod na tatlong linggo. And then, kung nag, nag-normalize, dok, wala na akong atake. Uh, hindi naman ako nag, nasumpong na nakayana naman na yung nakarang tatlong linggo. Maintain. Maintain muna. 
And then, kapag nagkaroon siya ng uh, relief at wala ng other problems, pwede ka mag-step down. No? So, yun yung step-by-step approach namin. Now, that is just your assessment and adjust. No? Ano pa yung kailangan namin i-assess? Symptoms ng pasyente, comorbidities. Kung uh, obese kasi ang pasyente, mas mati- malaki kasi ang chance na magkaroon siya ng exacerbation or atake ng asthma. And then, kung hindi pa rin okay, tignan mo baka mali yung paggamit nyo ng inhaler. Okay? And then, patient preferences and goals. Ano ba yung kailangan niyang, uh, anong gusto yung i-target tungkol sa asthma? Dok, sana wala na siyang symptoms kasi mag-exam na ako or babiyahe na ako sa susunod na uh, buwan kasi may vacation kami sa abroad. Ganun. So, kailangan maging aggressive ka sa management mo for your asthma. So, we let them realize that they have to be more serious with that case. No? Next is treatment of modifiable risk factors. Kung high blood siya, uh, may diabetes siya, gamutin ng maayos. Okay? And non-pharmacologic strategies, asthma medication, including ICS, education, and skill training. Now, education. It's important to take note also that we have a lot of patients as well as uh, colleagues of ours na are smokers. It's important for you guys to take into consideration that once you still smoke and you still have asthma, your symptoms will either not improve, it will still be there, magkakaroon ka pa rin ng symptoms of attack, and it might even worsen. Lalo na kung hindi natin nakokontrol ang paggamit ng paninigarilyo. Okay? Cigarette is highly, okay, one of the reasons why patients develop asthma. Okay? In those sense na wala naman silang family history ng atopy. Now, in other uh, strict sense, pwede rin mag-lead to what we call inflammations of a chronic onset. Pwede rin mag-cause yan ng COPD. Ang COPD, yan, medyo mas iba rin ang gamutan yan. And it would hamper your immune system. No, minsan, magkakaroon mas prone kasi infection sa baga. Yun naman ang ayaw natin mangyari. Okay? So, in... Um, a lesson for smokers is you have to take note that smoking and then you make a gesture of inhalation of your medication, you're just counteracting your medication. Kasi you're providing relief with your inhaler at the same time providing poison from your cigarette. Okay? So, it will not be more beneficial in a long-term sense. Okay? Ano pa? Cigarettes are associated with a lot of cancer. Oral cancer, throat cancer, lung cancer. Okay? And mind you, in, in some instances, if you continue, even if it's just one stick a day, it will, inc- it will still have a risk factor. It will still have a risk. It might not be now. It might be in the next 15 years, 5 years. Okay, but the important thing is you have to stop it as early as now. Okay? So, once you educate your patients about cigarettes as well as your education on the use of inhalers and the symptoms of asthma, you review the case after 3 weeks and then check again, reassess. Then, if there is something uh, uh, pro- uh, wrong or there's still a problem in the management, adjust and then try to adjust then review another three weeks it's a cycle of management for asthma and it works in most cases it helps as well they have better quality of life they have better um, targets especially in uh, physical activity and as w- uh, also it helps them uh, cope up with a better social uh, social engagement with other people. no. So, importante, makontrol mo yung symptoms. Kasi if you still um, experience symptoms of asthma despite having a, having medication, there's something wrong in the management. And if there's something wrong with the management, we have to adjust and we have to address that. Okay? Okay, matakot sa inyong mga doktor kasi nandyan sila 
is a learning uh, process both for the patient as well as for the doctor. No, um, we adjust, we advise the patient in all means, hindi lang sa gamutan dito, as well as your lifestyle. And pinakamahalaga is prevention of further complications. Okay? So, I hope marami kayo nakuha about asthma. And I do hope, no, in a strict sense, you need to know what are the things that you have to uh, be serious with your health. Health matters. Kasi right now, access to medications are relatively going up and nahihirapan din minsan yung mga pasyente na walang access sa gamot. So, ang mangyayari dyan is, well, hahayaan na lang nila yung mga gamot. Hayaan na lang, hahayaan na lang nila magkasakit. Yun naman ang ayaw natin. So, if you have problems with your health, seek consult. May mga government institutions naman tayo dito, like your DOH retained hospitals no, in each province. I think meron naman. And those consultations are free. And you could look at up. Uh, you you could look us up. No, rather I'm affiliated in one of them, and our consults are free in those areas. No, the siempre except in private practice. So if it, if we see each other in the clinics, iban naman yon. Because it's more on our day to day living naman yon. No, so it's a private endeavor. But in the government hospital, those are free consults, and we encourage you to avail those. Uh, free consults kasi we are uh, yun, manage, um, um, tasked by the government kumbaga, to promote better healthcare for everyone. Okay? Hanggang doon na lang. Okay? Ang video natin. This has been Dr. Chris for Scrub EMD. Your off-duty family doctor and see you on the next video. Okay? And hopefully, gawin natin to in a regular basis. Bye-bye guys. Where is my outro?